Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Bryant Heating and Cooling's weekend kickoff. It's rivalry week. It's the game. It's Ohio State, Michigan, and we can't wait. So we were doing all the big games. This is the biggest one of them all. We've got Zach Bourne, Bobby Carpenter, and Bill Landis. I'm Austin Ward. We are talking about the only game in the country that truly matters. It really is. It's kind of unfortunate this Saturday. There's not a whole lot of great ones. Well, and even if there were, I still wouldn't care about any of the other ones. This is <laughs> this is it. Um, Zach, I know you're fired up. You're gonna I'm ready out. to go, tailgate. Man. Is the tailgate already set up? Or <laughs> uh, it, it is. I feel like it is. I mean, God dang, we've already been planning for it forever. So, uh, no, I, I'm ready for it. It's uh, it's going to be one hell of a game. I think the rain's going to hold off, which is going to be good. Good for Buckeye Nation as well. And Good for uh, Berm. Good, good for Berm, for sure. He melts in the rain. He doesn't care for the weather. No, he does not. No. <laughs> I don't but come on, this, hey, this is 11-0, 11-0. and oh. I mean, last time it happened was 06, and I think in all of college football history, I think it's happened three times. That's it. And two of them being Ohio State, Michigan, I think. It might be only two times. I guess that's why it's the greatest rivalry in all of sport. In all of sport. Not as sport. I mean, we're talking going back to the Romans and the gladiators in the arena. <laughs> When Maximus was back there fighting hey, all of sport. The Romans and Greeks had a pretty good run, but they have been supplanted by the Buckeyes and Wolverines. I believe Jack Park told me, Zach, and so this might go back to some time of when it was 10-0 and 0 versus 10-0 and 0 or 9-0 and 0 versus 9-0, yeah. that this will be the fifth time both teams enter unbeaten or untied. And then during our, our show uh, we do on Roosters on Monday, I did a little more research, and I realized I believe this will be the 12th matchup between top five Ohio State, top five Michigan, and the home team has won all but one game, that being in 1975 when the Buckeyes oh, wow. won up in Ann Arbor. So really? Ohio State has won the majority of them, but you go back and you look at some of the ones from the 90s, 97. Oh, goodness, and I think... That was 90. back when they played six games. That was no, the season. 1997. <laughs> but yeah, so there, there, there's a lot, but like the whole who they the, play: Ohio Westland, Toledo, <laughs> over, over, know, Overland, Col- Overland, Overland College, College. The oh, and then Ohio State, Michigan. The worst loss Ohio State has ever taken: Overland College. Really? Claim ja- to fame. I would have ja- said Ohio Westland. Jack Park. Uh, I mean, listen, yeah. they might be second, but yeah. um, but the moral of the story is everyone gets like super not worried about this, but if you look historically. The home team has won this game more often than not. Like, you exclude some of those 90s teams with Cooper, which the only time he won was at home in 94, 98. Mm -hmm. Um, But most of the time, the home team has the advantage, especially in big-time matchups. And I think you look no further than last season in 2021 when you saw Michigan, after a year off, kind of a chance to reset, recalibrate. And a lot of those guys, they weren't part of the you know beatings of the past. They forgot about it. But then you have you know your full hundred thousand plus behind you. And if you can get some momentum going, I think that that matters a lot. Hmm. Well, the home team wins. I guess that's it for Brian <laughs> Heating and Cooling Systems weekend kickoff. That's all we got. We'll see Great analysis, it's, Bob. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, it's a good number. It's a good stat. Bill, is it as easy as that? Uh, no, I, I've seen the, the home team lose quite a bit in my time covering Ohio State when I've gone up to Ann Arbor. Well, yeah, because oh. you've done the last 20 years. <laughs> With the exception of, of, of last year. So right. no, it, it makes sense, I guess. Okay. I'm well, talking when teams are both yeah. good. <laughs> what, um, what is it like, Zach, to play in this game? Man, it's, uh, I don't want to say cliche to, for this answer, but you come to Ohio State to play in this game. You know, you as a kid growing up, especially in the Midwest, and heck, even with the way TV now is, kids nationwide, you know, kids in California be watching this game at 9 a.m. Kids in Florida be watching this game. You come to be a part of one of the greatest rivalries in all sports. I mean, when you get to Ohio State, it doesn't matter where you're from, California, Texas, Florida, wherever, this game is ingrained in you right away. You learn to hate. Michigan. You learned that that no matter what happens throughout the season, I've always got a little part of my eye on that game because I'm going to be ready for him. I know, you know, in the years past, granted, past 10 years hasn't really meant all that much, but normally winning the Big Ten has to do with winning that football game. Now getting to the Final Four has to do with winning that football game. We've seen it the last two years. So there are so, there's always so much at stake and for, for as a player, when I when I looked at that schedule, I know the very first thing I always saw was, all right, Michigan game, I know that, and then I'm kind of going backwards up. Yeah. Who we got? Yeah, Bob? 
You know, Zach even has a unique perspective because he has a father that played on the other side and a brother that is, you know, has a mixed relationship it's, there. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's, yeah, he has a, it is a mixed relationship. I mean, he started right? there, you know, he started there and then ultimately transferred down to Ohio State. And I always ask, like, if that was weird. I mean, there's only it's been, gotta a, be weird. there's only been a handful of guys and I don't know them all, but I know his I think brother's there's, one. There's only been, there's only been two. One went from, Ohio State to Michigan, but that was like in World War II when he started yeah. at Ohio State and got done with World War II and wanted to go back to college and went to Michigan. And I think Justin, that's it. I mean, to play on both sides of this is, is a pretty unique deal. And so I always enjoyed talking to uh, Justin about that. Uh, but, you know, I, I look at my time here. I've never been to an Ohio State-Michigan game in the shoe where they have lost. I went in 98. That was the first time I, you know, I'd ever gone to an Ohio State-Michigan game. It was the last one. Before they dug the track out, which, you know, was a historic event in and of itself. They had the grass still, and people were, like, shoveling up the grass as they won that game. Unfortunately, that year, they lost to Michigan State, much to the chagrin of Burr. I know he he holds that one in high re- high regard, but... Uh, he holds it in something. <laughs> he does. I mean, it was it was, a, it was a rough day. But, you know, that game came in in 2 We win that, 4 here. And then I came back, started coming back, I think, in 2010 when I was with the Lions. And then here for 2012 with Zach and, and then, then on to every home game. And it's it's been that was a special. good night in 2012. It Bob. was, it was. I think I pulled my hamstring running after a cab <laughs> that night. Um, but your landlord was there. <laughs> my yeah. landlord was there. Well, that is correct. That is true. That yes. is accurate. But I think you spent the night at the house too. One like, of the no, you can't throw me out. I went home. I own this place. I went home. Believe my my, my wife reminds me that I went oh, home right. and I was not in, in right. a good condition. But I'd like when, to hear more about. <laughs> that. Oh, it was a great night. We can do that later. It I was suppose. something. Um, but when you look at this game, you know, historic, like guys, especially from the state of Ohio, the state of Michigan, like there's the rivalry, there's guys that defect from Ohio that go up there, a la Justin Bourne, you know, Desmond Howard, Charles Woodson. I mean, they've had a ton of guys, guys that left from central Ohio. Mm-hmm. Oh goodness. Um, his name's going to escape me now. Burma will remember, uh, the, the offense cor- alignment from the sales. I mean, they've no, taken a bunch of guys cornerback in the nineties from Eastmore independence. Marcus Ray. Marcus Ray. Thank you. Well, well done. You're, I mean, you're not even, you were like probably six. But Marcus Ray, and I remember going there in 98 and listening to them boo him the whole time. Every time he made a tackle, I'm like, I don't know if I could go there and come yeah. back here and play after hearing this. And so, like, seeing how intense the rivalry was, getting a chance to play in it, and guys like, hey, here's the regular season, and then it's like, it's a little higher. Yeah. And it was the same way in the NFL. Like, get the playoffs a little bit higher. Like, we're at the top of this. How could it be any higher? Well, it raises the level because the intensity, the emotion, it makes they make it personal. And then I would listen to Earl Bruce talk about it. And Earl Bruce is what I call the triple threat of Ohio State. He's a played. He played here. He was assistant coach, and then he became the head coach. The only two other guys I know that are qualified that will qualify for that right now that are really close to it are Luke Fickle and potentially Brian Hartline. They would have a chance to have played here, coach here, and then potentially have the head job one day. Ruling out Mike Vrabel. Wow. Well, <laughs> I don't know if Mike's coming back. Maybe, and you know what? There's a chance that he could. You know, I know. I don't, I don't think Vrabel's is coming back. <laughs> I don't believe so yeah. either, but you never know. But just looking at it, like listening to those guys, especially Earl, when he would come back, the passion that he would speak of for this game, and he would sit right there. I know Zach was around when he, he was still doing yeah. it. And, I mean, he'd be in the front row, and he's just spraying spit all, all over you, face. talking about how you would think that he was going to coach the game the next day. Yeah. No one, no one told him. Glass. Oh, yeah, he flipped the, the flip that thing over. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was unreal. And he, cause he would take so much time. Tress would have to, like, walk him off. And then Urban's saying, like, okay, you're done now. Yeah. I mean, it Wrap would be like, it up. you have 10 minutes, but you took 30. Yeah. And the guys that post-practice, but he was just – there was all that. And, like, you, you, you're early in your career, you didn't understand it. But as you play them successively – you begin to realize, like, it's not just you and it's your team. I mean, you're carrying the weight of everybody that put that jersey on before you. It's a very special experience. But, and somebody had asked uh, Bill and I about that on OhioState.Rivals.com, like, is Ryan Day going to have anybody else in? You know, we know the legacy of Earl Bruce doing that with you all. I don't think that that can be – I heard they conjured him up. Easily. <laughs> uh, yeah, they might. Yeah. I mean, you want to talk Ryan Day, he's, he's all a Buckeye. He, no, they exhumed him and brought him back. <laughs> He's only he's ready for once. They a did year. that with Michael Jackson too. Yeah, it's a hologram. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's a hologram. Um, yeah, they so they definitely have a hologram of Earl Bruce in there this week. But you can the other you can tell that this week that Ryan Day is trying to eliminate all that stuff. And Earl was great at that. 
But if you don't have a like for like replacement for that, you're going to cut that part out of it. You're going to cut out senior tackle because they want this to feel well, like a more normal week. I will say this the cutting of senior tackle, I don't know if it was a more normal week. I think it's the fact that, and everybody's like, oh, it's the tradition. I'm like, well, the tradition changed when they moved the game after Correct. Thanksgiving. Yeah. And so you're trying to do senior tackle on Thanksgiving Day when guys like, all right, are we practicing for the game? Do we want to get out of here and see our families? I have one more yeah. thing. So you want to give that the respect it deserves and not detract from the game and also try to have some semblance of Thanksgiving. So it, there's a lot there that you're trying to put in. And I know Ryan talked, you know, they the, kind of you know, surveyed a little bit like, it's it's different. This isn't yeah. this isn't you know 1996 when the game was before Thanksgiving yeah. well, anymore. Well, I also know is you know normally practices in the afternoon, right? You got class in the morning, then you come over meetings, afternoon practice. You're leaving the facility seven o'clock, whatever it might be. That game when you have senior tackle because coach wants to get you out by a normal hour, you're in there at like seven a.m. to do meetings, to go through practice, and then senior tackle takes two, two and a half hours. So they're trying to get everyone out by one o'clock, one thirty, so you can get off and do things with your family. The coaches can have some family time. Mm-hmm. So by getting rid of that, now you're not waking guys up at six AM and they actually can sleep in a little bit. You know, and everyone wants to talk about rest and mentally preparing for that game. Last thing you want to do is forty eight hours prior waking those guys up early and then, you know, Friday they can sleep in, do whatever, but then Saturday you're up early again. Wake up call, I think, is like six fifteen, if I well, remember right. And I think for, they've, ca- I think game. they've kind of changed it. Well, yeah, for the noon game. For the noon game, yeah. I think they want to keep this Thursday. Like, I don't think they're letting guys early out on early on Thursday. I mean, it's not going to be like a full six thirty seven o'clock, but no, it's no, not no, going to no, be right. done but, by but, noon, right? But they're trying to make it a normal day, yes. so that's what I'm getting at. But they don't want to uh, bring those guys in super early, so they want to have a normal day while letting them sleep in, keep the routines a little bit, and then push practice back into to that standpoint that Bob was talking about where senior tackle normally is. Bill, what has been your uh, your favorite uh, moment of covering the game so far in your career? When Penn yeah. State lost to both of them. <laughs> no, um, that's a good question. I don't know. I thought... Ted and two this Saturday, bud. <laughs> Langrant trophy. That's right. That thing's a monstrosity. Langrant? Um, after yeah. the beer? No, after... Uh, after what they would... Like, Ohio State is the land-grant institution of the state of Ohio. So is Penn oh. State and Michigan State. Oh, and they play for a trophy that's about oh, a land grant me. trophy. I'm like, yeah. wow, <laughs> they really free beer. expanded to Penn <laughs> State. <laughs> wow. Oh man, good my, for them. My favorite. I like. I so growing up in Philadelphia, I was like, oh yeah, Eagles Cowboys. I know what rivalry is. And then I got here in 2014 and covered my first Ohio State Michigan game. I was like, nope, I did not know <laughs> what what rivalry is. Um, I think maybe more than like any one moment, because uh, it's hard to pick one. I just really. Ad- Enjoy like the energy in that stadium, particularly in Ohio Stadium. I think it's a little different in there than it is up up in Ann Arbor. Maybe that's because every time I've been there, with the exception of last year, everyone in Ann Arbor just assumed they were going to lose. Yeah, but um, it's terrible in Ann Arbor. Yeah, and in Ohio Stadium, like they'll get on a golf course. For yeah, sake. yeah. It's oh, not, dude, it's terrible. There's four entrances into the stadium, <laughs> or whatever it is. I it's mean, real fun getting out of there. Oh my god, <laughs> I hate that place. I have never, I have never felt an energy in any other athletic sporting event setting than like what I feel in Ohio stadium on Saturday about 10 o'clock in the morning when fans start getting into that stadium for that game. So that's probably the thing I appreciate the most. You don't I'll tell you what, you hey, were never at the ancient hey, Coliseum hey, when yeah, they used hey, to bring I'll the t- lions in and I was not set them loose on the no. folks. There's, and they, and they, and they give them the thumbs up or least, thumbs down, right? Yeah. They, uh, I'll tell you what, to your point though, <clears throat> the shoe's going to be rocking on Saturday. Yeah. There have been, uh, this game hasn't happened in four years. Yo, know, 2018. Yeah, crazy. 2020 did not happen. The the Ohio State fan base is salivating wanting this game to happen. They're ready for those winged helmets to come in the the stadium and just give them hell. I can guarantee you that place, rain, shine, whatever it might be, that place will be rocking on Saturday. Mm. What time will you go into the stadium? 11:30. Total pride. Uh, Bob, I'm not. You don't do the. T- you have zero pride. You don't. I just uh, don't do the tunnel of pride. Well, that means you don't have pride then. If you're not in the tunnel, that's literally the tunnel of pride. So if you're not in there, uh, Bob, there's a lot of other things lacking, going on. Like, Plus, my tailgate on the other side of the stadium. That means I got to walk yeah. all the way around. Oh, I know. It's you it's, bring a golf a big cart lift. over. I'm in. <laughs> it's a big lift. A big lift. I know. So hey, sacrifice. I'll Zach. be cheering them on. Sacrifice. Giving up something you love for something you love even more. I mean, I'm just I'm just throwing like that out there. Like my wife, who's a Michigan fan. Exactly. No, right. You what, might want to. I'm going to give you a filed down toothbrush tonight in case you need it. Shankability. <laughs> yeah. Just to be safe. I have to Sorry. swing by there because if I have to listen Zach's to race talk trash, like yeah. that's we that we got to be we're going to win. Yeah, that can't happen. No doubt. 
we took a couple weeks off because you weren't showing up to the tailgate early enough to hook up the fireball. Situation. No, there were a couple of times I yelled at you because I was walking through as you were walking by. Oh, and oh, well, I'll bring some fireball down. Me. I got two jugs of fireball ready to go. <laughs> jugs? Well, yeah, they, they sold it. By the oh, jug. they they sell fireball by the jug. <laughs> you just bring walking in with a barrel. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, that's what we're all about. Probably the greatest moment in the Ohio State Michigan rivalry. Well. First of all, I think it was John Hicks that grabbed down the banner. I mean, whoever had the, the idea, like, the I'm going to grab the banner and rip yeah. it down and stomp on it. The Marcus Hall <laughs> double bird. Don't Marcus Hall yeah. double board and bird. That's probably the second. And then the third, right behind that, is I don't know if your dad played with Walt Downing up there. He may have. He probably I think so, a little right bit. around yeah. him. And so Walt Downing, who's TJ Downing's father, went to Canton Glen Oak, plays here with me, started – Sophomore year, junior year, and then his senior year is a fifth. He had five years, fifth year. And so in 2005, they're like honoring, I don't know, like the 30, 30th anniversary or 25th anniversary of one of their Big Ten championship teams. And TJ tells me at the first, he's like, watch this. He's like, my dad's got something for him. Like, TJ was a wild card. He would have two shanks, oh, two shanks. and maybe a nine. Okay. He was ready to rock at all times. And his dad is about the same. And they introduced the team. I'm wow, introducing the well, by, by, you know, Big Ten Championship Michigan Wolverines. And Walt Downing steps out there with his Michigan, his Michigan um, Letterman jacket on. And then you could see the red. It was almost like watching like pro wrestling. And he rips <laughs> off his jacket and like takes two steps out, and, like points the <laughs> hand up with the TJ's jersey on. I'm like, then it goes from cheers just to amazing booze. And I'm like, that is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I never thought I would see something like that, like with a grown man in a stadium. The sun is playing Intensity, there. They're, they're honoring him. Intensity. He's like, I don't care for them. They didn't want TJ, all this stuff. And I'm like, that's amazing, Walt. I love you. Like, this is go Bucks all the way. They didn't recruit Bob either. They didn't. I yelled at George Herman on the sideline. I think he was still there when Justin got there. He was the D coordinator. They offered yeah. Lawrence Reed, your guy from yeah. Michigan, or from Pickerington. Pickerington. And Lawrence was a good player. Lawrence is a great player. Yeah, yeah. I like Lawrence. Yeah. And that was up the next year, and they're like, well, we're not. We're going to take one linebacker. And they had offered Mike DeAndrea, and that really made me angry. And not that I wanted to go there, but it was like, just the fact that you didn't ask. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to be able to politely decline. Yeah. yeah. No doubt. No. And they didn't. And so in 2004, I, I was, at least want to be asked at dinner. Show me. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> Show let me at least respect. deny the date. So in 03, yeah. I didn't play. I wasn't playing great. We lost the game. But in 04, we beat them down here and they're nine and one going to the Rose Bowl already. And it was awesome. Like, I was tackling Mike, Mike Hart on stretches, like on their sideline and then yelling at uh, George Tom Her No, it's George. Not, uh, George. George Herman on the sideline, their sideline. Like, no. like an idiot. I mean, That's but it was okay. fun. I love it. It's what happens. It's the trash talk. That's why I think the most interesting part of this week has been the fact that Michigan has backed off all of their chesty stuff from a year ago. <laughs> Jim Harbaugh saying, "We're oh, we're we're all superheroes, and there's no hate in this." Wait, what? Yeah. He yeah. said we're all yeah. super. He said they're two superheroes. Yeah. He is yeah. amazing. Yeah. I love that I, guy. I don't, uh, what if if I said something about Ryan Day being born on third base? <laughs> if I said, it doesn't matter. It, it's I irrelevant. That. That's what he's. It's I, irre- I heard like, that. I'm like, buddy. Like, it's not irrelevant. You have to own it. Yeah, take yeah. it. Yeah. Like, you want to know something? It was easy for him to make those comments after they won last year, and now knowing that, guess what? <laughs> it's like one of those things where you step into a boxing ring for the first time, and you somehow get a lucky <laughs> knockout, and you want to talk like you're the bad guy, and then knowing that, guess what? Oh shoot! I gotta step in the ring Rematch. again, and you and you Let's back up. Friends, up right? Yeah, yeah, like hey man, no, no, we're, we're okay. Good. Let's just touch. Gloves. Yeah, 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 we're good. So that's totally Jim Harbaugh. He's trying to pull off of that, and be like, well, no, no, no. You know, he's just in a completely different spot than what he was last year after they won the football game, and now this year he knows that he's got to answer to everything he said, and he doesn't want to. Bill, don't you think he's just got to you know step up? Like he's not the only one. They had, you know, players, players. say they're soft, they're finesse. Former, former assistant coach. Yeah, I mean, I, w- I think it makes it fun. Like, I would own that if I were them. I get, I don't know, you don't want to be, as you said, be put back on the bulletin board. Guess what? You're already on that. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't don't matter. get to take Might as well get an updated quote, <laughs> yeah, you know? Right. Quinn Temple's not in there. Like, oh, well, well, never mind it. Jim Harbaugh just took it back. Sorry. Yeah, it, it's, it's already out there. You can't pull it back. So, uh, I don't know what that was. That was... So I don't I don't know with Harbaugh he's so weird like I don't I don't know if that was like intentionally pulling it back or if like he genuinely forgot that he <laughs> that he had said that because he doesn't think slept at a recruit's like house <laughs> on the floor of his bedroom a kicker no less yeah I mean that's all you need to know about the guy strange guy. my dad told me I wouldn't have let you go to the school 
just based upon that, even if that wasn't you, I would have never let him in the house, number one, to do that. <laughs> but number two, like, I wouldn't let you go play for a dude who's sleeping in kids' bedrooms in high school. Showing up in pajamas and you have a sleeping bag. And there's a show for that. <laughs> they ask you to have a seat. Come on in, sir. <laughs> You brought this uh, scholarship yeah. paper? Did he ask you for this? Exactly. You he, you think that this young man asked you for this? I don't think so. Let's talk about protocol. Chris Hansen, come on. Yeah, I prefer Sky Hansen. Or whatever, both of them. Well, <laughs> it's a lot better to see one than the other. So, yeah, we haven't talked much about this actual matchup. We're going to do that in the second half of the show. Uh, we got to talk about the history and the fun of the game and the – Trash talk and these guys experiencing it before we can get in uh, to Ohio State, Michigan on Saturday. We're going to do that uh, after Bob and Born get on the whiteboard for one of the most educational opportunities of the week. We'll be right back after that. Precision engineering. Rigorous attention to detail. A Bryant Evolution heating system is so well designed, it's as much of a joy to install as it is to use. Good to go. For the dealer nearest you, visit Bryant.com. All right, Bob. We're here at Bobby and Bourne's Big Board. I like it. That's it's like, nice. It's like Mel and, uh, what's his name? I don't know. You lost me on that one. Mel Kuyper and old oh. boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Yep, I'm picking up what you're putting down now. All right, so. Todd McShay. There you go. So we've got Ohio State's defense here. <laughs> Obviously, everyone knows that from a personnel standpoint. This is kind of a, a look that Michigan has been showing a lot of this year. Last year, we saw them a lot in 12 with two tight ends. This year, they're running a lot of 11 from the standpoint of what people, uh, when we say 11 personnel, one wide receiver, one, or, uh, one, one tailback, one tight end, and three wide receivers. So here you're seeing them in a bunch formation here. Their formations have been very, very tight. They want to play really, uh, really close. So before, you know, and this is good. Before we get going, like 11. So 11 is predominantly passing. So you see the numbers aligned out here. You can grab your program, identify that. So 15 is going to be Tanner McAllister. So he is the nickelback. So here's what's important to note. A Z, that's a receiving position. Like an H, more of a, depending on what you're going to do. Could be a tight end, could be a receiver. Y is the tight end, T's the tailback. The H, that could be a tight end. So if they go 12, one running back, two tight ends, Watch who they have right here, because this could go from 15 to 30, I believe, Cody Simon. Is that correct? Correct. Look at that. So this could change, depending on personnel and what they have available. And that'll be part of the matchup with Jim Knowles of understanding of, hey, Tanner's tough, he's physical, he'll throw it in there, but this is a physical mismatch for him. So pay attention of what they have on the field. I feel like if they go to more 12, Zach, we might start to see more of a three linebacker set, which is what a lot of Buckeye fans have kind of reached yeah. out and talked about. Are they going to do that? Well, I also think what you're going to do is, you're right, this is the, the the cat and mouse game because if Michigan goes to a 12 personnel, you might even see 15 right here turn into 33, and they might see Jack Sawyer running around doing, doing, a, doing some different things. But what Michigan's been doing this year is, is going, because they are so confident in their offensive line and being able to run the football, they're going in 11 personnel, so the defense has to match up with smaller football, knowing, hey, we can throw off of this, so you got to leave Tanner McAllister there knowing he's matched up against Z. you got to keep uh, kind of our normal 4-2-5 personnel in there, and then they're still going to run the football off of this. Now, a big thing that they've been doing from a running play standpoint is the typical away, uh, away play. Wisconsin's been huge on this for many years. Blake Corum has absolutely perfected this run for, for Michigan. But you have the Y, the tight end, who's going across the formation to kick out the, the end man on the line scrimmage here, number nine, as he's, as he's going to be coming down. This is just a typical inside zone that the running back is going to be taken and he can read it, get his shoulder square. A lot of times, Blake Corm has been living on the cutback all year long, but these guys are obviously climbing up. You got doubles here coming up to cut off. You, you are, uh, yeah, there. You got these guys that are coming in here cutting off. You got the Z who's coming in here. So you're working the middle of the defense with double teams up to the second level. Blake Corm gets a pick, whatever hole he wants, depending on where this goes, and he tries to cut it. 
So what's important, you know, the, the Blake Corum, who's the T right here, the tailback, he can be front side, near set to them, or he can be far side, far set away. And either way, what he does such a good job of, is you, you, you watch this and you go back and look at all of the highlights of what Michigan has done and when he's had these long runs, very rarely, you know, he'll find seams up in here and he'll hit it. He's not averse to running inside, but he does a great job of being able to sell inside. You get the linebackers to commit, and occasionally you'll get the overhang player to commit. He'll sell in here, boom, and he'll hit a cutback. Or he'll sell in here, boom, and hit this bounce, and he'll find these seams right here on the edge. And especially in short yardage, when everybody is focused on filling this thing up, he's going to attack, and he will feel when one of these overhang players commits inside, boom. He'll hit, and he does such a good job. He doesn't bounce it wide. He gets right off the edge, and he finds that little seam and that little crease, and he has top-end speed, and he'll get it going. Now, that's assuming he's healthy and assuming you know a number of things, but he does a really good job in their short yardage stuff of being able to hit that. The other thing that I think Michigan does really good with, which it's going to be interesting the way Ohio State plays it, is normally a split. Uh, the split of an offense lineman is you know one and a half feet. They've got a little a split to them. Michigan keeps their split super tight. So what they do is they almost take the formation and shrink it down, knowing that they're going to get some drive, and knowing that Blake Corm's a small running back and is so quick, he they try to bring everything down so then he can get those quick bounces. And when the formation is so tight, it's easier for him to see that and get to the corner. So when you, as Zach mentioned, you tighten those down, you can get more push, and they'll hang on these double teams more on the inside, and they'll try to get push, and it's up to the backers, both Steel Chambers, Tommy Eichenberger, to come down, fill up these gaps, take the double teams off, because if not, and you start getting penetration and pushing these guys down, you're able to get in here, and you get these vertical seams, and so he gets in, he can shoot there, and that's what causes, they see space, the overhang players see space, see space, so he'll hit that, or boom, he'll hit it to the outside, so Hang on these double teams, tight splits. The wider you are, the easier it is for both of the defensive tackles. Teron Vincent in there. You've got Mike Hall. You've got a drawn cage. A number of guys. They can split those double teams. You tighten it down. They can get a better push. In doing that, it's going to create those vertical seams and then obviously the ability to bounce. So that's a little bit of the cat and mouse play of how they run their offense, which is kind of unique, and not a lot of teams do that. So here's the new wrinkle that I think you're going to see Michigan do this year or this week, especially after watching Maryland play Ohio State, is almost go to a triple option read. J.J. McCarthy's athletic, a lot more athletic than what people think. So what they're going to now do is they're going to read JT here. They're going to show run everything that, that – um, Everything that we just explained, J.J. McCarthy here is going to read J.T. If he comes down and follows the run, he's going to keep it this way. But what happens is these guys are going to release. Whatever pattern they want to do, they're going to release. What J.J. McCarthy now has is, okay, J.T.'s going down. Now these guys either have to take the pass or pull up on J.J. So J.J. can run it. We saw it a lot with uh, uh Tua, little Tua, this past weekend where he was able to do this stuff and JT would be put in a bad position. What, as a defense, what you normally need to do is say, hey, in that situation, who are you responsible for? A lot of times they'll say, hey, defensive end, you take quarterback regardless. If they're showing a triple, you take the quarterback to force the handoff and bring everything back in here and make them play it. But you're going to see this with JJ's uh, athleticism. Here's another thing. JJ McCarthy, it's a weird stat, is like, 27% completion rate going to his left. When he goes to his right, much higher. So out of this formation is when you're going to see them, if they're on the left hash of the field, you're going to see them go to this because he's much better thrown to his right. And most quarterbacks are, especially a young guy like him, because when you go to your other side, opposite side, if you're running, you have to open your hips, get all the way around. It's very disciplined. He's a very fluid athlete, but he's not fully polished and developed as a quarterback. So if you can stop the run, Keep him inside of here and force him to make throws. As you've looked throughout the season, he has struggled mightily. Yes. He can get the ball out of his hand quick. He can complete some short stuff when it's off of play action. He does a good job getting out of the pocket and finding guys, and he can always turn it up and run. But if you force him to stay in here and be an actual quarterback, that's where he's going to struggle. He's a young player, and he hasn't really developed that aspect of his game yet. That's it, man. There we Bobby go. Bobby and Bourne's big board. That's what we got. If you're the Buckeyes, defeat these plays, victory. Okay, simply phenomenal whiteboard work. It is my favorite 
part of any show all year, but especially here. Uh, that's Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems weekend kickoff. It's our t- it's time to really get into this matchup. We're going to drill down, Bill, and we're going to start with the Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems hottest takes, and you have to go first. Ooh, <clears throat> I'm crank it up. Turn up the heat. I'm I'm thinking of owning what I said to you in the press box. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> On Saturday. Nice. You saved it all week. Let's hear it. <clears throat> As we were watching Dallin Hayden run all over Maryland, I turned to Austin and I said, uh, am I crazy for thinking that Dallin might go Bianca Batuka mode on, on Michigan next week? And he said, no, maybe not. I think so. So uh, I, I mean, love that. I don't, 313 yards is a lot. I don't know if I predict exactly that number, but uh, – <sighs> I think I think not the full Bianca not Batuka. the full. You never want to go full Bianca Batuka, but uh, I would. Uh, I think that Dallin's going to have a big game on on Saturday. I think I think he has to be the guy. Clearly, I don't I don't think they can try to play one of these injured running backs. Actually, I think it off to a hot start, and I think Dallin's capable of that. But also, just think he really suits what they want to do running the football schematically. He finds that cutback lane, and we saw Trey Sermon at the end of the 2020 season go nuts just simply doing that. And and I think ideally that's what Ohio State wants out of its running back. So. Uh, I think that Dallin Hayden will do that on Saturday. Two bills. Let's call it uh, 227. 227. How many yes. touchdowns? I mean, if he rushes for 150, that's a win. <laughs> oh, yeah. The dude's, oh, yeah. The dude's yeah, cranking yeah. out 150 and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's and a half Maryland, dude. <laughs> yeah, uh, 227 and uh, two touchdowns. 227 and two tutties. All right. Bob, how can you top that? If he rushes for over 200 yards, dude, it, it, that, that's a guaranteed win. If he rushes for over 150, I think it's a guaranteed win. Bob, I think that's what he's getting at. I understand he just didn't that. Give a score prediction. Yeah, I know. <laughs> later, I got win. you on that. That's at a later segment. Um, <laughs> gosh, what was this? You said hot takes, bold, hottest, uh, hottest, hottest take. takes, hottest takes. Crank it up. Burn. Uh, maybe I should go with like a bitter burn take. You know, <laughs> talk about some bitter sort of burn fumbled, face. fumbled. Maybe a. Uh, uh, kickoff return for a touchdown or something he's against, been against for Ohio State. Every week. Oh, against I think he's almost, Ohio State? He's been asking for it. He's not been begging for it. Please happen. Um, you know, I, I'm i going to say this. I think the uh, I think Ohio State holds Michigan under 100 yards rushing. How much Bob, of that is Blake Corum? You took mine. That's a good hot take, buddy. Whoa. I don't know if Blake how much Blake Corum plays. I, I'm going to oh. tell you this. He's going to be – he will be less than 100% yep. suboptimal. I don't but think he's going to play. At all. If Donovan Edwards plays, I mean, I'm not sure his situation. He's got the hand deal. I mean, we have guys that play through two break, broken hands. They can't, apparently can't find a guy to play through one. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't which know. team's under tough a, now? Huh? Under 100 yards rushing. That's Who's a soft? great one. That's a well, great hot take. I'm going to tell you Bob. this: like watching watching this defensive line and, and the linebackers, like they're infinitely better than they were last year. Oh, no doubt. And they know, like those guys fully understand what happened last year and what the names associated with them. And the characteristics people associated with their defense that they were a part of. And I don't think they want those things coming back. And so it's it's about raising your emotional level to match that of your opposition. That's kind of it in life. I mean, you've got to raise that and you'll find it and get it done. And I think Tommy, Steele, Cody, like all those guys get it. You know, the back end, and especially those guys on the, on the front, they got pushed around a lot, man. And I guarantee you they've watched that film. It's like, oh, it's bad. When you, there's nothing worse in football, in any sport, than coaches going back and watching plays, and you know what the play is coming, and you know it's going to be bad, and you have yeah. to continue to see it. And it's like, yeah, I can't do anything about it. It's fixed on this on this now, but moving forward, can we get some fresh tape? Can I get yeah. some fresh tape? The, we don't the, have to see this the, anymore. That, that front seven is going to be ready Saturday. They yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll be, ready. be ready. Bob, Jim Knowles claimed on Tuesday that he never watched last year's Michigan game. Do you believe that? Well, here's the thing. Did they play Bedlam, Bedlam the last game of the season last year? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now they don't. I mean, I'm losing no, my now mind. It's last, now it's last week. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't know what's because, going on. Because Oklahoma's leaving. But why does that matter for this year? <laughs> because they didn't want to make it the last week of the season. Whatever. But anyway. <laughs> so they're playing a night game. So I believe he probably didn't watch that during the day. Um, I'm not talking about live. He says he's never I, I, watched the film of it, Bob. And I, I, You know what? I could believe that. Okay. Talking to Jim Knowles. I could believe that. Okay. He probably, you know what? I don't want to have any misconceptions about guys. I'm gonna. Ju- you tell me where guys are playing, what we can do. We'll talk about them. We'll watch them move, and then I'll evaluate them based on where. I you see don't him. think this week he's watched any film of last year's game? When did he tell you this? He said it. Well, again, it was not a private conversation. It was in a public press conference, and that's why I'm saying. When did maybe he say it, it though? 
Tuesday. Tuesday. So he said I hadn't. Okay. And I think, look, no way. What you're saying, no way. What you're saying, Bob, he has said before that he didn't want to watch any film of last year for that to color his perception of what he saw throughout spring ball, through practice. He wanted to have a clean slate to evaluate the talent. And I get that, and I totally believe that part. But I, I'm just sitting here wondering. He he has watched cutups of Michigan's that game. Offense, yeah, maybe not the whole the whole game film. He has watched cutups from that game. That might be part of it. I don't think. Yeah, maybe he sat down. And you know what? This is one of the things, and I'll never forget this. We in 2002 sat down and watched the final drive of the '96 game, mm-hmm. and that was a, the spring slip, I believe, tie streaks. It was a game they lost, I think, was it 14-9? 14-9. Or 13-9? 13-9. The two field goals and a touchdown. Yeah. The, the one touchdown was the uh, tie streaks in the game. And we watched the final drive of that. No one on our team was playing in that, even on the team yeah. at that time. It was the, the oldest guys were sophomores in high school. And we watched that. And I'll never forget looking over and um, Mark Snyder saying, he goes, this was Supposed to be one of the best defenses in Ohio State history. Yeah, he's like, and you look at the names that are on there, and Fickle, and Winfield, and Springs, and all these guys, Vrabel, and you know, I mean, just play, stud after stud. I mean, all kinds of guys in the NFL. And he goes, they couldn't get off the field. They couldn't get a stop when they needed to. And you're watching. He's like, and so as as good as they were, that's essentially what their legacy ultimately become became. Yeah. And so it would not surprise me if they watched some of that as a team. Maybe watch, I don't know if you watch the first half, watch the second half, try to uh, figure something out. Probably be the second half. When yeah. They didn't get to a single third down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bill, yes. Bill, Bill, are you buying it or no? I do not buy it. No, I think uh, when Ryan Day interviewed him a Jim liar, Rolls, then? Uh, uh No, no. I, I mean, never, if you're not buying it, you're calling I would never well, call just, a fellow Philadelphian a, Phil, a liar. fellow Philadelphian. Uh, I think when Ryan Day interviewed Jim Knowles, he threw the tape out. We said he's a vegan, this. but he only eats, he only, but he will eat he a cheesesteak. Cheese yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and him are going to They consider time. that part of being a vegetarian in Philly. It's a vegetable, yeah. That's yeah. a salad. It's right. It's a salad. Bob, he's calling him a liar. Well, because I they, you know, I heard they they scoop up some rats and pigeons and throw them in there. The street meat, the street meat. Philly. The street meat of Philly. Yeah. Got it. A delicious yeah. treat. Um, hottest. Uh, uh, right. wow. Eating gluing systems. Okay. Well, Bob's getting us off topic tonight, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, that's, so, the part, that's the part of weekend <laughs> kickoff. Yeah, no doubt that we all enjoy. That we hope, that's why people tune in. We hope they continue yes. to tune in for Correct. it. Because we enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, so, I was going to say that I think the Michigan offense rushing tax averaging 240 yards a game, something like that. That's it's the mo- most in the country by far. It's up there. Um, I was going to say, I think the Ohio State defense holds them less than 100 yards rushing. But Drop since Bob, go low. Drop <laughs> but since Bob took it, I, I totally want to go defense here because after last weekend, everyone's probably pointing the finger at the Ohio State defense with um, – the way they couldn't defend the triple option, the way they couldn't get off the field in some big-time situations. I want to go defense, but since Bob did, C.J. Stroud's going to throw for five TDs and win the Heisman this weekend. Five tutties. That was, five, the, that was five, the other one Five tutties. C.J. Stroud is going to throw for five tutties and win the Heisman Trophy with this game this weekend. Well, if you add that, that with Bill, I mean, that's 49 points right there. So There you go. And that's going, against no a, going against the number one defense in the country. Yeah. But, Bob, guess what? This ain't Hawaii they're playing or Connecticut. This isn't the Fighting Huskies. Hey, Connecticut's bowl eligible, bro. Oh, oh, oh stop. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, Jim a, Moore for coach uh, of the hey, year, by Lancaster the way. Lancaster High School Probably. could beat Connecticut. No, the, <laughs> I appreciate you saying that. They were, the Gales were very though. good this they're year. Bad, I know. They are much Pickerton be- Central could. They are much better <laughs> this year. They, yeah. they were the worst team in Division One last year, and this year they are bowl eligible. They have beaten legitimate teams, which yeah. is insane. So, Bill, what was that game they won a couple weeks ago? Which game? UConn? <laughs> I cannot say this is a family show. Oh, okay. They beat UMass, but it has a fun, has a fun name. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> just the combination of Connecticut and UMass and what this person hey, it's decided the battle to call for the new, game. It's the battle for uh, New England right there. Well... That would have been a much cleaner name than what they came up. With. Someone called. Someone told me that was the the Liberty Battle, the Boston Tea Party. Also, would also have been, would have been all would have been better. Now, I'm I'm guessing UConn Fun. and UMass. You could think of some nice yeah. things. <laughs> what what's uh what's your hot take? The Butkus Award voters. I want to know who you oh, are. Oh, okay. oh, Tommy Eichenberg. Yeah. Terrible. Okay. Here we go. I'm who were the Who were the three finalists? By the way. They named their five There's finalists, five which makes what? it even more. Okay, ridiculous. now I'm really upset. Yes, now, now we have a problem. 
Jack Campbell, a guy from Georgia that no one knows about, and his stats are terrible. Kid from uh, Cincinnati. Kid from Cincinnati. The kid from Arkansas kid from who's Arkansas. a Arkansas. Yeah. Give me a break. Um, kid from Arkansas that when they played Alabama was running all over the field because he got dusted. Yeah. Um, so I, I get to vote on a lot of awards panels. I'm a football writer, association. In case you knew this, I'm a pretty big deal. <laughs> and I don't say that because I like to do it because I think the college football's voting system is extremely broken and horrible. What do you we, mean? I mean, the fact that I know people that vote for the Heisman who I'm not sure understand the game of football. Well, really there are people who don't even cover Ohio State. Who's that? Part Desmond of Howard? Electorate here. <laughs> well, possibly him, but there are other people who like Big pseudo facts. work in the sports media industry, but I'm like, there's no way you watch football the way you need to. to have it. it might be a small influence, but you're Drop having, names, Bob. I'm like, I, I'm Drop like, names. I am in the process of working on getting a Heisman vote, though. Oh, you well, can do because that. Because they haven't updated the Ohio voting role for the Heisman well, in like 10 years. Because there's a gentleman who controls it who really isn't even in. And who doesn't cover college football. Yes. That's um, the worst part. Yeah. So, great job there. You're I'm not even talking to Heisman. About, what? I want to vote. I've had it twice, and I've lost it twice because it's like the electoral college, and it depends on where you live. Electoral college? Are we losing, losing population in Ohio <laughs> so you lost your vote? Is that what you're telling me? When I had it in Wyoming. And I was the representative for that fine state, the equality state. Did you have in Tennessee? To, I had to give it up. I got it, went to Tennessee. They said, well, this is the Tennessee beat writer. He should definitely have it. He's, he's got an important job. Because the guy who controls Ohio, is it, it's, a, it's a ridiculous process. It's a problem. Mm-hmm. And I've now been here for 12 years, and I will pat myself on the back. I've done a very good job making a career well, for that's myself That's what here. you think you've done. I'm mean, I I still know if here. Agree. I'm still here. Well, I mean. And multiple. You're, you're getting sidetracked on your hot okay. take. So, you they, don't can't, have they to... can't get rid of you is what you were saying. <laughs> They've tried. Multiple multiple entities have tried. ESPN was like, let's get this guy out of here. And I was just like, no, I'm not leaving. Not freaking leaving. Going to cover I this like team till I die. The Wolf of Wall Street um, over here. Okay. So, what happens is in 1956, you would have to mail in a ballot. Say, okay, well, let's start early so that people can – Give us some candidates from across the country. So in October, you'd say, oh, well, this person from uh, Colorado State and Wyoming, they're good. That's the, those are the teams that I know. I'm going to send that in. I'm going to put that stamp on the envelope. You're going to get it in two weeks. And then they're going to they're going to count up those ballots. So well, now we've got 12 semifinals. What is this, Maricopa County? Yeah. It takes <laughs> much longer. Than I knew Maricopa. that's where Bob was going with this. I mean, seriously. I, <laughs> but that's, what, that's the way all this works. So that's why you see this process of semifinalists coming out in the first week of November. You still have a month of the season to go. Then two weeks later, they, hey, vote on this. Why do I still have to tell you who the finalists should be in the middle of November? The most important games, when are they happening? The end of November and the first week of December. We are voting all for all of these things online. It takes two seconds. Some of these idiots use Survey Monkey to try and tell you the who the best does. Yeah. Wait, Blitnikoff uses Survey, survey Monkey? monkey. Come on, like, we can't so get anything better than that. So you get done and you're like, hey, would you like to take 15 so, more surveys to make 10 cents? That's a, free, like, that's a free service. And I'm like, no, I wouldn't. But I would like you to give these trophies to the actual best players in the country. And I think that you should wait until you have a full body of work. And by the way, if you don't know that Tommy Eichenberg is the best linebacker in the country, then don't vote for it. Don't vote. Okay, good hot hot take. That is a hot take. Anyway, I think that Tommy Eichenberg is going to have 20 tackles, two sacks, a forced fumble, and a recovery on Saturday. I could buy that, too. I really could. With how much Michigan Michigan runs the football, I can buy it. 20 tackles, the two sacks, pick, and whatever else you're calling. It's all all happening. No pick. Forced fumble. It's too close. The hell with it. There's going like to be a big cl- like a seal. <laughs> well, so how is he? How is he doing it? So he came out on Tuesday to I saw him the other day, and his hand looked like an oompa loompa. I was like, he came out hey, with bro, no, no cast. You're right, and he had like, like, why is your hand? He's like, it's like super fat and puffy, and it was like orange from the iodine. And I was like, look at him. Like, He's like yeah, dude, I just had, had surgery. They wouldn't do it on Sunday, so I had to do it on Monday. You know, I'm like, yeah, it's surgery in his hand. Yes, so see, the bones like hands. wired together. Yes, he has he has broken bones in both hands. No, I know, but they did surgery on, on him? last, no, last Monday. Monday. Yeah, and so he came out on Tuesday. And he did media availability, which we really love when Tommy Eichenberg comes out. He's super say, talkative, because he's a great conversationalist. <laughs> super talkative, and he didn't have casts on either hand. Uh, he had nothing on the right hand; was totally empty. The left had just two band aids on it. Like, okay, 
broken bones in there. Like they really got to cover the yeah. incisions. But I could still see it. I took a picture. I'm like, that's pretty gross. But let's do that anyway, <laughs> just for a future reference for what because of what he's going to do on Saturday. And then and then like Bill's like, hey, how are your hands? And he's like. They feel good. They feel good. <laughs> you still play Uger with Steel, uh, <laughs> well, we Cade, and his girlfriend. I asked Cade, and Cade's like, how does Tommy do this with two broken hands? He's like, well, Steel just has to shuffle. <laughs> 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 so this dude can't shuffle up and play Euchre, but he's throwing Maryland dudes to the ground, just gra- somehow grabbing with two casts on his hands and like just flinging them for tackles for loss in the this back. Is That's what, when they talk about toughness, that's toughness. Dudes that are willing to play through that. I heard you talking today on, you know, uh, Bishop and Friends yeah. about that. And it was like, I mean, there's a truth to that where guys, I mean, there's the there's times where you're not clear to play, and then there's times you're clear to play to tolerance. Like, you go to the doctor, like, to tolerance. What does that mean? Well, you can do as much as you can tolerate. You're probably not, not going to make it worse, but it's to your pain threshold, whatever that is. And so if you want to keep playing, if you're – you're a sadist, then you go ahead and keep playing because it's going to feel terrible. And know that's going to feel even worse the next day after it sets in and your adrenaline wears off. But how much do you care about what you do? Like, that's the question. Well, I, and I think that, Bob, I mean, a lot of my opinion on that has changed over the years and it's been informed by being around guys like you two that, you know, how, how bad do you want it? Like, everybody's going to hurt in November. You ever seen John Simon walk around and lift like... Dude, oh... 2012 before that. So one of my first memories of covering oh, the God. game was John We can't Simon. even get into what happened with him. Yeah. That, that was well, criminal. Yeah, and disgusting. Um, it but, was disgusting. But on yeah. the Tuesday of that week. At all costs. I'm asking John about the various injuries, but the knee specifically. And I'd gotten – so he was you like – You should have just asked me. I would have been like, I, oh, I, 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 I'm sure that I did ask you, and that's how I found out what was going on. But I would have spilled. He was like <laughs> – before Tough Borland, before Tommy Eichen were doing this, John Simon was like, I'm not going to say anyone, anything to anybody about anything. And we'd asked him about the injuries throughout the year. And so my my tact for the last week, his last game, it's like, John, why don't you want to talk about your injuries? And he said, why do you keep asking me about it? <laughs> <laughs> Typical John and I, response. And I said, Okay. Yeah. Touche. You got it. <laughs> you yeah. you should have asked John about. Uh, oh my God! What's the video game you used to play? What's the uh, the uh, army one? Call, like, of Call, Duty. Call of Duty. You should just ask him about Call of Duty. That's all he would do. What? He'd come home from a game on Saturday night. John, I'm sorry. Probably people don't want to know this. You know, we'd be going out to the bars. He'd be like, John, come on, let's go. He said, Nope. He'd get himself a fifth of Jack Daniels. He, he would get himself a log of, of dip, and he would dip and drink Jack Daniels and play Call of Duty all night. I'd come home at 3 in the morning. He's still sitting there playing. He'd be, come on, man. Get up on the sticks. Like, no, I'm going to bed. That's John Simon for you. I love I love John Simon. And I, I've always enjoyed that part. Yeah. With guys like Tommy, uh, Tough, and John, because, like, they're they're trying to make it difficult well, for me, and that, then I have to yeah. work harder. Well, you know? This is the thing. Dude. But there are, you you're can also only do that if you're a great freaking player. You're pounding into a you're pounding into a, a lump of granite with like you know a pen. Like yeah. that's what you're using to get in there. It's gonna break every well, time. Yeah, I had you very look, I had very little chance. But of you look at some of the, John you look at some yeah. of those guys. You know, like Lathan who broken thumb. I can't even imagine. It hurts to block kicks. People don't realize that. It hurts oh. to block a kick. Especially when he- it's cold. With healthy hands. Oh, yeah. Then you add in the cold, and then you add in a broken thumb. And it's like, hey, my thumb's already smashed. And you just are basically, like, I'm going to acknowledge that we're just going to hit this with a hammer, and it's going to feel even worse. And so those guys doing all those things. And I, I joke now. I mean, John Simon's body, if he were to die today, be buried and exhumed, they'd probably say he was a 100-year-old coal miner who got crushed by a boulder. <laughs> That's what his body, his skeleton remains would show you. It would be That's so disfigured comparison. and deformed. <laughs> I mean, he is in there. Edmund lives like, John can't even hardly lift anymore. Like, I don't know what joy he derives from he, life. He can't raise he his can't arm. He can't raise his <laughs> arm. All these guys give all this stuff. And so that's the thing. Like, seeing, cause I, not that that was gone for a little bit, but last year, I don't know if those guys fully understood what commitment was and what all those things meant. And so they were all young and they hadn't yep. played. As you get older and you become more heavily invested and emotionally involved in things, and I, I told a lot of guys this, like especially the seniors. I told Zach Harrison, like, buddy, when you run out of the tunnel against Indiana, make sure you go up and take a look. 
and just look at everything that's here. Because I'm going to tell you this, you only got one more of them and you're not going to remember the last one. So like, appreciate that. I've walked out of this tunnel a hundred times since I've got done playing. I'm just a person walking out of the tunnel now. Like you don't get to wear the uniform. You don't get to wear the Jersey. Like you're you don't just, get to get ready for a you game. You don't get to get ready yeah. for a game. You're just, just walking. You're just a fireball. You're kidding yes. <laughs> you're just walking out of there. And sometimes, you know, eventually you'll start losing track of where you're at and they'll have to carry you by your hand and pull you out. You'll have drool coming out of your mouth and you'll have to lead you out to the way, lead the way to go. Like John Simon. I mean, he, he <laughs> joked like that's, that's the reality, right. but enjoy it while you have it and understand what it means. And so like, I think those guys, you start to see like that hourglass, yeah. those sands are starting to creep down in the top and there's a feeling and a sense of understanding of purpose. Like this is a huge game. We get to make our mark. We're playing in Ohio stadium. Most of these guys have never won in here. I go as good as it is to win on the road and do it up there. That's awesome. Quiet them down, but to win at home and especially with everything else riding on it, knowing if you win this, hey, but, I mean, but there's a good of, chance you're playing Iowa again yeah, for heaven's hey, sake. But, but think Jesus. about that. How many of the guys on this team were on that 18 team? Like probably not, five, I think seven, it's, I think not, not many, I right? Think we counted four or five. Not many. Yeah. So think about the guys. They've never beaten Michigan at home. Oh, yeah. Never. Yep. I mean, think about how crazy that is, or even played them at home. I mean, that's the that's the insane thing, right? They went there in 19, Justin Fields played his butt off, 20, you don't play him, and then you get your ass beat last year. It's how are it's you going to respond to it, and how are you going to go out this year, obviously, at home for the first time in a while? All right. How are they going to? What is the key matchup that you're watching, and what is the score going to be? Zach. Oh, you're going start with Bill. <laughs> no, I like them starting with you. It gives me time to think. Oh, what do man. you mean? You've been thinking about this all day. <laughs> you have been. I know. That's the problem. I mean, you have been. <laughs> don't, don't tell everybody when we're recording Bill, this. Bill, go ahead. We've done about 15 <laughs> shows already today. Oh, man. I have a score. Um the more I've thought, like, I, I actually think this matchup kind of favors Ohio State maybe a little more than I would have thought perhaps a week or two ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I Don't think, make eye contact with Berm because he'll talk you out of it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That guy's a ball of anxiety over there. Um, I like Ohio State, like, 42 to 24. Like, I think it's a fairly comfortable win for them. I just don't think, like, I think Michigan could. Not especially even 28. I mean, you're doing three scores. Three scores. I think Michigan's defense. Uh, while it is pretty good, like more of like a, some of its parts. That was better than last year is what I've Some been told. people think it is. From I'm, a statistical I'm not so sure no. I believe that, and I think the statistics are, are clouding people's vision because like UConn threw for 24 yards against them, and that, that gooses the numbers. That does help. Yeah. It's a goose suit. It's a goose suit. In Hawaii. Hawaii, Hawaii. Hawaii was goose. a goose egg too, I think. <laughs> I just I, goose them a little bit. I think I think that Ohio State, while, while Michigan We did is, play Iowa, though. You, Michigan's pretty unique, but I think Ohio State has seen – Teams that are similar to Michigan, and Michigan has seen nothing like Ohio State so right. far so far this season. And I think there's a there's a chance that Michigan gets a little shell shocked, especially on defense. If C.J. Stroud and the offense can start quickly, which I think is imperative, uh, and I think they will, and I think because of that they win fairly comfortably, forty two twenty four. God, they score forty two. It's a game. It's a wrap. It's because yeah. Michigan's not capable of scoring forty two against no. this defense. I, I will go to my grave if they give up more. If this defense gives up more than. Ooh, what's the number? What's the number, Bob? 24. I'm inclined to say 17 to 21. 20. Um, but I'll go with 24. Uh, what did I say on Monday? I think I said 24-10. You said something real low. It was lower. 24-10. I didn't feel like it would be as comfortable as you thought. Maybe close. You get the seven point into the fourth quarter, one possession. You think it's 24-10 Ohio State? I don't know why. Like I'm feel, I just... And listen... If they get the passing game going, it's what Bill said. Oh, I'm just I'm leaning into this. Twenty four ten. It's a fourteen point win. You're doubling the number just because you're not scoring a lot of points. How about winning with defense once in a while? Go how ahead. About Dallin go, Hayden? Hayden. go ahead. How about I'll, I'll, Dallin Hayden? Ahead. How about Dallin Hayden has you know 178 yards on the ground. The defense holds them to under 100 yards rushing, and they just pound the ball on them. Have a couple shots over the top. And you win it, and you just get to grind that thing out and take knees in the fourth quarter. That would be fantastic. Ooh, won't happen, Ryan, but go Ryan ahead. Yeah, yeah, I, was about to say, I will tell you this. Happening. There is nothing more demo- – there is nothing – like no greater spike in my mind than when you get like inside the 20-yard line, and then you just, just choose to take knees. You okay. look over the – like they know – you know that I can score again. And I'm just going to – I'm going to take it. I'm going to lay it down right here. It's a little bit like rounders. <laughs> I'm going to lay this down, Teddy. I'm going to lay this I know, down. I know lay down a monster. You're going to lay it down right there for him. 
And let them know. Let them know. It's <laughs> you're like chewing those orders. Harbaugh could go drinking that milk all day. <laughs> You can but, keep hey, sleeping in those dudes' rooms all day long. Uh, but I don't Bob, have enough time. Bob, that time, at, kind of Bob, time. if you're only up 24, you're not sending the message that you can score on them every single time. Everybody that's we've it. seen. That's the thing. Winning no. in different ways is important. What's the key Let, matchup, Bob? The key matchup? Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> well, because I'm trying to think. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out. Trying who, to piece it into a 24 I'm trying to, to figure out who is going to play as well. Because if Donovan... Uh, Edwards doesn't play. If Blake Corum is like a shell, either if either one of those guys aren't great, like who is the match? You know who I'm gonna go with the matchup is? I'm gonna go with a trio of dudes. Tree, trio of dudes. Three dudes, Tree right dudes. here. Couple dudes from Central Ohio and one dude from I believe Washington. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go with a Zach Harrison. I'm gonna go with a Zach and a Jack, and then a JT. All right. And if they can find a way to keep JJ McCarthy in the pocket. My man, he might throw two picks as well because he wants to get out of there. He needs space. He does not like to be contained. And hopefully JT learned from last week, like, ah, I can get to a layup. Ah, oh, nope, he just got outside. Yeah. Stay outside. Stay outside. Stay. Just keep him in there. He wants to get away. He does. It's like Southwest. He <laughs> wants to get away. Keep him in the pocket and you'll be good. Don't even have to pressure just to circle him up, and he will run right to you because yeah. he'll feel so uncomfortable he doesn't, in there. Yeah, you just can't leave him in a skate patch. So just, 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 hey, oh, oh, boom, you ran right to me, sack. You don't have to go get him. He will come to you. <laughs> and your bags fly free, Bob. <laughs> your bags fly free. Bags Ding. fly free. Okay. Um, all right, I am going Ohio State 45, Michigan 17. 45-17. 45-17. And, um, and where's it going to be determined? Uh, obviously, it goes back to what Bob said earlier. I think it's all dictated very early on in the game how Ohio State's front seven does against Michigan's offensive line. Michigan's offensive line is still very, yes. very good. It all depends on who is on the back end. If Blake Corum, Corum is a great back. In my opinion, I think he's the best running back in the country. I really do. It's good. Um, very good. But him not being 100%, changes things. Him not being in the game at all changes things. Even with it being Donovan Edwards, Donovan Edwards has the stats he does because of Blake Corm and because he's playing off of him. I think that's where the matchup is won. I think that's where everyone, especially early on in the football game, when Michigan tries to establish the run, if Ohio State gets them into some third and long early and makes J.J. McCarthy throw the football and it not be successful, which I think we can all agree J.J. McCarthy is not a great thrower, that's going to set the tone early. The other thing, I, I I don't think it's going to be a blowout from the beginning by any means, but I think it's going to be one of those games that maybe going into the fourth quarter, it's a uh, uh, you know, 31-17 situation, and then Ohio State just hammers it down. Wait, Ryan Day wants to put it to him. Yeah. Definitely wants to put it to him. Also, if it gets late into the fourth quarter and they can take some shots, C.J. Stroud's going to take some shots because Ryan Day wants – Wants to give him the Heisman. Can Ryan That's bring a baseball and just toss it to Jim? Like, well, so the- I was going to say, Bob, I That's really, what, I really think great. like Quinn Temple's going to keep like a baseball bat on the sideline, <laughs> and then once it's over and the clock hits zero, then just Jose Bautista just bat flip. There's your home run. What if Ryan just like Sucker. does like the like the Kirk Gibson run around, just fake the, the ba- slow, fake yeah. the slow shot? Yeah. Yeah. He's got a lot of options. Like, I, doesn't he have to do something? That's so why like, I think more than scoring more points, I think Ryan would like to rush for like two fifty on them and hold them to seventy yards. He likes to be like when you talk a lot of trash, I'm going to beat you at doing what you want to do to us. It may yeah, not be as impressive. I, yeah, I get that, but but Ryan but Ryan wants to put it to him. Ryan Ryan hit Ryan's way of winning is airing the ball out and just hitting home run after home run. But he yeah. does like running the football. But I guarantee you, he wants to air that thing out on him and just it's kind of like dunking on someone, right? Yeah. When, when you that's when you what have he was doing on Brent Venables. Yeah, that's when, what he when you have the the hot shot, you know, the hot shots alley oop slam dunks on people. <laughs> you know what everyone does with the basketball hoop and just comes up. <laughs> Ryan Day wants to do that Jim Harbaugh all day long and just dunk on him. And so he's going to do everything possible to open up that playbook, throw different things at him that they've never seen before, and just try and hit home run after home run. Whew. That sounds right. I. Or triple after triple. He hits. Triple. Hey, you can score a lot of Two runs. Triples with a, run. a, lot of tri- a lot of triples. I 
I don't think Blake Corum is going to play, so I'm going to take away a touchdown from what I predicted earlier in the week. Wow. And I think Ohio State will win 34-16. to 16. And I think that the key matchup here, and one thing that can make it wonky, funky, however Ryan Day wants to describe it, is the injury situation to Matthew Jones. And if they have to, I Enoch? would say Michigan's best strength is at Yamahi? the tackle. Enoch Vimahi or Josh Fryer, however they want to do it, probably Enoch Vimahi would be my guess. Um, and I think he's a very good player. But it's just not an ideal situation. I'm saying if. If he doesn't match that standard, Matthew Jones the last couple weeks I thought he'd played much better. You don't want to deal with an injury and upset the chemistry when you're going into this game in particular. And not against, I think that those are probably two of the best players on Michigan's defense. Uh, last year it was really built by the, the edge rush. You had Hutchinson and Ojabo. They were giving Ohio State fits. We know that. And maybe those defensive tackles didn't get enough credit, but they're the ones that are doing it this year. So where has Ohio State struggled? At times, interior. run blocking is coming on the interior. And Luke Whipler is also dealing with a little bit of an ankle injury. He's playing through that. Uh, Donovan Jackson, I think, since the, the mistake against Iowa, has you know worked through a little bit of a slump. If there's something that Michigan can take advantage of, I think that's probably where it is. So the challenge will go to those interior linemen. But which, is they answer, why, which is why they're going to air it out all that's day right. long. Then Ryan Day can throw the bat flip if they handle that. If they just, it's going to probably be. You know, if I have my way for Ohio State, I think it'd be about mm. their pass protection anyway. But have it your way, Wendy's. They're not the sponsor of the show, Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems. They're based in Columbus, though. Well, they are a Columbus business, but they they didn't have us in. Dave up in Dublin, we don't care about him. We go and we hang out with Bryant Heating and Cooling. He's Systems. in the ground now, so R.I.P. To a real one. He did a great to work. A real one. <laughs> to a we real appreciate one. our great friends at Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems. We're having us out here for the fourth time this year. We just did the big games. We're hoping that there's an opportunity to do one more or maybe two more. We'll see. That's well, you got to win to that's, get one more. That's you have. To, hey, it's survive in advance, and that goes for this show as well because we want to be in here. I want to drink some beverages with you guys, and I want to talk more ball because I have a great time talking to Bill Landis, Bobby Carpenter, and Zach Bourne. I am Austin Ward. The game is tomorrow. What else can we say?